All right, welcome back to TK Tennis. In the very first video I did on YouTube, I talked about snapback. And in particular, I was reviewing these hyper snapback strings that I'm gonna call them from Toraline and Restring. In that video, I was basically claiming that there's sort of a new generation of strings that have arrived onto the market. And I called them generation 2.0. And that was Toraline, for the most part, Toraline and Restring strings, which you may have heard a lot about. And this snapback term, the tennis term of the year, in that video, I was discussing that generation version 1.0 of polyester strings was essentially Luxalon Alu that came out around the 2000s or 1999. It was made very popular by Gustavo Quirtin when he won the French Open numerous times in the early 2000s. He was one of the first top professionals to use polyester strings. And when that happened, that was probably the largest change or revolution in tennis in the past 40 years, since the change from wood rackets to aluminum and aluminum to graphite. So if you're not familiar with snapback, snapback is simply the string's ability to return back into its position after it strikes the ball, so returning it into its default position. Prior to polyester strings, snapback wasn't spoken about much. And you notice that all the top professionals after each point were constantly fixing their strings and returning them back into their default position. And the reason was quite simple. If the strings stay out of place significantly and you strike the ball in that same spot, that larger square now does impact the flight of the ball and the accuracy of the ball. But since polyester strings came out, snapback became even more important and more understood because it was very clear that a polyester's more aggressive snapback, its ability to return faster as it's gripping the ball and as the ball releases from the string, and I'll show an illustration right here, that enabled players to put more spin and thereby more control onto their shots. When Andre Agassi tested polys, his first response was, this is basically like cheating. And I remember the first time I used polyester strings, I believe it was back in the 2002 Miami Open at Key Biscayne in Crandon Park, where we wanted to play tennis, but we didn't bring our rackets. So we purchased some rackets, went out to the courts, and they strung it with Luxalon Alu. And it was incredible. It was a changing moment for the tennis game. I thought I was playing incredible, and it was very noticeable how dramatic the control you had with these particular strings. And prior to that, I was using synthetic gut with Kevlar, so Prince Pro Blend, for probably about a decade because I liked the firmness of it. So the biggest revolution in the past 20 to 30 years has been string technology, and I don't think that could really be argued. Now, one more thing about snapback. What do you care about snapback in terms of the cross strings or the main strings? Well, snapback primarily happens or is most affecting the ball on the main strings because when you're striking a forehand, you're brushing up vertically and the ball's gripping into the strings, it's deflecting the main string down and then the main string returns into its position. The same thing on the backhand and even the same thing on a kick serve. It's the main strings that do the majority of the flexing. Of course you want the cross strings to snap back as well, but they're not as important in terms of applying spin onto the ball. So it's not as relevant for the typical shot. Going back to generation one, which was Luxon, I classified in that first video that every other string that came after it, polyester string, was basically version 1.5 basically it just gave you more options. They weren't necessarily better, but some of the polyesters were softer, some were a little bit more aggressive, some were a little firmer, some were a little bit more crispy, a little bit more lively, and these slight variations, sort of I termed generation 1.5. But then in that early video, in that first video, I was basically claiming that the strings from Restring and the strings from Toraline were a generation two. And the reason was when I pulled it off the stringing machine, after you string with these generation two strings, you can clearly tell the aggressiveness, like we tell the string didn't return, but it has been played with quite a bit. And the aggressiveness, right when you pull off these strings off of the stringing machine, the snapback is very aggressive. It seems faster. I don't have any measurements to prove it, but you can clearly tell just by the finger test compared to the 1.0 and 1.5 generation strings and the 2.0s, these return more aggressively. So you would think, how important is snapback to spin? Well, we already know that polyester strings or multifilaments, if they snap back to their default position and they do so in a fairly fast manner, that is great for spin. So you would think if it's hyper snapback and they return faster, it should be better. It only makes sense in terms of concept. And I believe that as well, that that crispiness and that snapback and aggressive snapback 
was better. But since then, I don't think I'm buying into that hype anymore. And the reason is really quite simple. I've been testing dozens of strings all year long. And while Toro Line in particular, Toro Toro is my personal favorite, and Super Toro, I think they're both really good strings, I still find myself more often than not using the previous generation or enjoying the previous generation more. And that's just me personally. That doesn't mean if you're a professional or a college level player, you won't like these more. I'm just saying demonstratively that are these 2.0 strings necessarily better than these 1.5 strings or the 1.0 strings? And I don't think so. And the reason is, simple, like I said, it's because I enjoy playing with Super Smash and with this big hitter S7 and with Grapple Stake Tour M8 and many of these previous generation strings still are very consistent. There's one problem I've noticed with these generation two dot strings that makes me like them typically maybe a little bit less. And that is your swing speed and how these strings affect the control of the ball depending on your swing speed. When I'm hitting a ball with the previous generation, whether I swing very aggressively or a little less aggressively, I get a very consistent result. Nothing seems to change much, very dramatically. However, with these hyper snapback strings, I get an occasional sense of premature snapback. And it usually happens when I can't accelerate on the ball as much as I thought I was going to need to, or I may have even decelerated on contact. So the ball ends up striking it, and maybe I can't break through the crust, and I move the strings back a little, and they snap, snap back a little prematurely. Now, I have no proof to say whether that's true. It's just the sensation that I get if I'm changing my swing speeds and they are variable, I'm seemingly getting slightly less consistent results. Now, if I hit the ball very committedly every time, I don't see that change in results. I get a very clean, consistent ball with outstanding control. That's just my singular point of view that I don't believe these hyper snapback strings are generally superior in any way to the previous generation. And I'll give you one other anecdotal fact. The fact is that all the top pros in the top 100, I don't know any of them that are using hyper snapback strings. It doesn't mean there's none that aren't using them. But you could say, it would be easy to argue that if these strings were demonstrably better and gave you more control, more power, more spin, whatever it might be, that the pros would be using those strings. And they're not. There's, the number one string on tour is still Luxalon Alu, or Alu Power, and Luxalon 4G, sort of that first generation of strings, or the first 1.5 generation of strings. Now you might say, well, they're, they're getting paid to rep those strings, and that's why they're using them. That might be true, but I don't believe that. They would be able to use these strings and whatever the color that they needed to to make it look like another string that they were using. Because if they were demonstratively better, it's hard to imagine the top pros wouldn't find a way to be using these strings. Again, that might be wrong, but I don't believe it to be wrong. And mostly I don't believe it to be wrong because I've used all these strings and there's not a clear cut difference. And one of those factors might be how fresh their strings are and how new. Pros are not using strings that have a lot of wear on them. They rarely use a string for more than an hour, more than a half hour. So you can take a string like Alu Power that does not have great longevity and does get mushy in a few hours for a recreational player. But for a pro who uses it for 45 minutes, it doesn't. The same thing with Polytor Pro, another very popular string on the tour. This gets mushy and it loses some snapback pretty early on. I think everybody pretty much knows that. But pros don't care about it. So when these older polyesters or these previous generation polyesters are fresh, their snapback is outstanding and it's very consistent. And you can't, or I can't sit here and say that these are better. Are these better after four or five hours? Yes, I think they are. But then again, there's many other generation 1.5 strings that have snapback that are superior to Polytor Pro and to Alu Power after an hour or two hours. Like I know for sure Super Smash returns wonderfully for me for about four or five hours. Its longevity is very good. Is it as good as these Toroline strings and restring strings? No, probably not. It's probably a little bit less. They will lose their elasticity sooner or their coding doesn't allow them to return back into their full position. That's my point of view on snapback. After seven or eight months of testing, they are both wonderful. My two favorite high snapback strings are Toroline Super Toro and Toroline Toro Toro, but I have more strings that I like as much, if not slightly more, that are from the previous generation strings. So that's one person's point of view. 
what I like doesn't mean what you will like. It's just a perspective that there's a lot of hype about snapback and really fast or hyper snapback is better than the previous generations of snapback, which is say fast snapback. And I am sitting here telling you that I do not believe that to be true. You don't necessarily have to believe the hype. I'm not saying you shouldn't believe the hype or if you are an aggressive player that has a very consistent swing like a college level player you will probably like the hyper snapback strings plus their longevity does seem to be generally better so it's in that category where i think hyper snapback strings are better with their really slick coatings is their longevity tends to be better however i also think their the detriment is the inconsistency with your swing speeds affects your accuracy of your ball so that's my thoughts on snapback thanks for watching if you like these types of videos please leave a like and subscribe and even share the video and i will see you in the next ace and if you have any questions ask them in the comments see you in the next one